wide. So on a 55 foot trailer, they're not able to get back here. We got to cart them in with the skid loader and we can't just fork them in. We've got to go on our uh, forks with a set of straps so we can kind of rotate them around some trees. There we go, there is the newest job site. And I'm glad you guys are here to follow along with the job, with the project, because it's gonna be an awesome one. This video series, I think is what a lot of you have been waiting for because all the time we're building these structures and we always seem to fall short. We always leave before the concrete's poured. We, you never see the building finished. Uh, we don't ever really do any of that work, but this building right here, we're gonna be doing a lot of finished work. If this is something you've been wanting to see that you're hitting that notification bell, because you're probably already subscribed to the channel, right? Uh, if not, hey, go ahead and do that. But we're gonna be building a 40, yeah, this is a 40 by 72 uh, two-story building. I don't want to call it a hunting cabin because last time we built a hunting cabin you guys kind of screamed that it's not a cabin It's a freaking mansion. Uh, this is not going to be that big. However, it's going to be I think pretty epic There's going to be a lot of cool features There's going to be things that you've you've never seen us do before that we have done But we've never been able to share with you guys whether that be finishing off an interior uh, We've got standing seam roofing on this one. We've got a ton of versetta stone including a full chimney with versetta stone we've got a two-story porch we've got some composite decking i mean there's just a, a ton of features on this project that i can't wait to share with you guys and i'm sure we're gonna we're gonna get to all of it eventually so let's go ahead and we're gonna start building this thing which doesn't contain a lot of you know details that you aren't used to but i'm definitely going to make sure that i share with you some of the unique things that are, we're doing on this build that we haven't done in the past so if you're excited as much as i am let's go ahead and get into this one so like i said this building's a little unique in that we have these piers already uh already done and the concrete guy he took care of those for us he did this nice chamfer on the top because our finished floor will be up to here and then these will stick up and that'll allow him to put some sweat joint around this some expansion it can move but these will be completely frost free so i think that's a great detail what greg and i are going to do right now is set up the stabila 180 off of this corner remember we always come in an inch and a half so our concrete is poured to the exact dimension of our building in this case 40 by 72 but we'll come in an inch and a half set the laser we'll get a nice square line that is going to be so easy with the 180 on this wall and it will give us our 180 line on the end wall so we'll be able to mark that corner that corner and we'll also be able to get a mark on this pier right where the where the perfect square is for the outside dimension of our post. Nice thing about that is we don't have to come back and do it later and it's gonna be integrated perfectly with the building for square. You know, the thing you'll notice about this is there's two lasers going out each way and only one laser going this way because this is the 180. So it's gonna give you a 180 degree line perfectly square to this line. So we're gonna turn this on, set it up on this mark. And you have to just be somewhat close. You don't have to be perfect because there's a I think a 10 degree variance on this thing, maybe more. I just made that up, bro. I have no idea what the variance is. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it, it sounds probably. I bought it. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> One of the nice things about using the layout station is you don't have to snap lines. You can just take your receiver to every location you want to mark on. Boom. Even though it's not breezy today, if it was breezy and you were trying to snap a 72 foot line, you might have a little bit of an arc to it. So now we'll go ahead and get an exact dimension in our laser line to 71.9, which is the outside of our columns, not the main dimension of the building. Remember, 72 is the total dimension. We're going to go inch and a half around the entire perimeter, and that's where our wall girts go. So one thing that you'll always hear us do, or see us, or hear us, whatever, is burning a foot. You can see I'm at the one foot mark. That's just because it's easier than holding your tape measure exactly on the edge. It just doesn't work that way. So we always burn a foot, add a foot to our total. So now Greg is looking for 40 foot, 9 inches right where the laser is. So now that we have these, I guess, three points, these two walls marked, we'll just take this layout station, transfer it to one of those marks, 
and double check it back to this mark here. So if we move it to where Greg's at, we'll double check it to this mark, which is gonna then give us a perfectly square line way down to that far corner. So now that we have all of our lines snapped, I can just come through, take my Sharpie, you can see, and I can mark out exactly my post centers are going to be. So that's 24, 32, because these are all going to be 8 foot on centers. And I'm sure this makes everybody happy because I don't have to spray paint anything. So there is no tape measures being harmed in this process with spray paint. Since we have these marks down here on our wall, right on our string line, uh, this chalk line can get removed if, uh, if ever we were to get rained on during the construction process. So what I like to do is just take my Sharpie, line up the face of my bracket on that line, and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that whole bracket line. But then with this column, these brackets, they're just at five inches wide, but our columns are five and three eighths wide. So I don't actually wanna be exactly on that line. I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball off the line about an eighth of an inch. And I can take my, um, I can take my square here or whatever measuring device, and I can go ahead and give myself a center mark on this bracket to line it up on your crow's foot. Oh, I just broke that sucker right off, Greg. Now, these tap cons are just to hold the bracket in place. The engineering and uh, shear values and all of that good stuff does not come from the tap cons, they're added strength, but we rely on the 5.8 Titan HDs, which is what we'll put in next. So once we have all of our intermediate brackets installed, those are all the ones that are gonna be in the middle of the walls. We've got our corner and our jam brackets to deal with. Now, we're gonna take a standard uh, universal bracket here that we installed on all of our other uh, post locations. However, we're just gonna go ahead and cut it in half and I'll show you why we do that. I just kinda eyeball the center. Um, we've got this uh, eight inch cordless metal saw. Milwaukee just sent this out, honestly. I've used it a couple times, super smooth. I've got the corded version, but having cordless is amazing. But I'll tell you what, what really makes it, and this isn't just a sales pitch here, guys, like these Ceramet 2 carbide blades are legit. You're gonna see, this is only a seven and a quarter inch blade on this eight inch saw, because I don't really need the capacity. I've already used this blade on a job site. So we've already used it, it's not brand new. And you're gonna see how quickly this thing cuts through. Now that was pretty darn quick, right? Let me go ahead and cut through these other two because I've got to cut all three of these in half. And then I'll show you what also is just awesome about this saw. So the biggest thing you're gonna notice is I've got crazy arm hair. I've always had a lot of arm hair and when you're cutting steel, I know this is insane, but all these little shavings are gonna be all over you. Instead, with this saw, they're all right here. Look at that. That is just from cutting these couple brackets. Maybe I'll do a tools day if it's something you guys are interested in to give you my thoughts. But one thing's for sure, it makes cutting these brackets up a lot better than doing uh, a grinder. And I don't know if you can see just how smooth this is. Not hot to touch. These were just cut. Take a look at this. I've cut now probably 10, 10 or 12 of those brackets. And look at those teeth.
These things cut cold. Uh, I'm telling you, the Diablo Ceramet 2 Carbolize, man. These are the Steel Demons. It's awesome. I probably won't use that whole box in a year because they last so long. What we've got going on here on the corner detail is, and I know I've had people ask me about this, like you cut this bracket off, so now there's nothing underneath this corner. Now listen, these are three-ply laminated, glued, clinch riveted columns. Those laminates are not going anywhere. I'm not gonna have sagging. It's gonna be just fine, I promise. This is what we started with. And if we go ahead and let, let's say we cut this ear off, we still have this quarter inch plate that we have to deal with as we wrap around our um, grade board. So by cutting it in half, this is the way these are kind of engineered to be done. Our corner brackets are locked into our sidewall and our end wall. Like they aren't moving the same thing on a door jam. If we have a two piece bracket like this, we've got this condition to deal with on the inside of our door jam where we're trying to wrap around some trims. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll do the same thing only on this corner bracket, I'll go ahead and install two Tapcon anchors, not just one. Another thing we're doing is we're making sure that we're four and a half of an inch off of the outside dimension. Our posts will sit this way, not this way. You always want to make sure that your sidewall posts are running all the same, including your corner. And then when you go to your end wall post, those are gonna be different because the strength axis of the column is what you're looking at. While we could wet set these brackets, that means that we gotta be here when the concrete's being poured. We gotta make sure that the concrete contractor's forms are set up perfectly. We actually have to do one of two things. Go with what the concrete contractor has set up already, or we have to tell the concrete contractor, hey, we're, we're not really trusting of you, so we're gonna do it our own way, and you gotta wait for us to do that while um, we wanna make it perfect, and then you can pour your wall. It just is kind of uncomfortable, and in the end, we're not really saving a lot. So if we can do a wet set anchor, it's great. If, if not, uh, like this, this is great too, man. This building is not gonna go anywhere. Uh, these these are awesome, so feel good about that. And in a little bit, I'll talk to you kind of why there's a wall here instead of the traditional concrete pier that you guys have seen us do a ton here on YouTube as well. So what we're doing right now, uh, a lot of people will comment down below when we show this process because they don't quite understand it. And basically we can't just assume that this wall is perfectly uh, level because it's not. There's gonna be minor ups and downs. And what we like to do is once our brackets are set, we find our highest point on the on the wall which is right here we've already gone around and kind of checked it and then we're going to set our laser receiver here because we've got our rotary 350 laser out there and that is giving us a perfect level line around the site that we can then use this receiver check where it's beeping which i've got the beep off i'm doing it for you youtube you and your dogs i want to make sure that nobody is got a dog barking right now so i'm going to leave the laser beeping off but know that right now we're at zero. So what that means is as I go around to each bracket, I can move this grade stick to zero and read, read the dimension on my stick. And what that tells me on this one right here is minus 1 16th. So what that means, I'm gonna take my marker that I don't have just steal Greg's pencil. And I'm gonna write minus 1 16th. Now, I'm gonna do that on every bracket, although every bracket is gonna have its independent number. Some of them might all be the same, and that would be awesome, because that would mean that our concrete is very good. However, they're gonna be you know, a variance of maybe up to a half of an inch, and we've had that. It's no big deal. You'll never know it when the job is done, but I'll do that on each bracket, so that when we go make up our columns, which we'll do next, We'll use this dimension to ensure that everything is the same across the building site. So I'll go ahead and do that on all these brackets. It doesn't take a ton of time to go through and just double check. You could probably build off the wall just saying everything is the same and you'd be okay. No one's going to really probably know the difference, but I feel like the more time you spend in the beginning with layout, the better you're gonna be at the end because any small difference or issue at the beginning 
can multiply and exponentially grow as the building gets taller. So uh, just take it for what it is, you know, took me an extra five minutes. I mean, I just walked around the site, made sure everything was exact, and now we can transfer those all over to our columns. So I know I always say the same thing. I say, all right, we're gonna make up our columns. And then I get frustrated when people ask me if we make our own columns. When I say that we're making up our columns, I, what I mean is Ohio Timberland has already made our columns. Like they've glued them, they've laminated them, they've surface milled them so everything is nice and clean and perfect. Uh, they finger jointed them with a treated bottom and we are now going to take all those dimensions from the Stabila rotary laser and we're going to make them work for us. So you can see I've got this center board. This is a four foot center notch. So I request our columns to come with a center notch as you can see right here and it's open. So we have to make them fit our building. These are 20 foot columns. They got a four foot center notch our building wall is going to be 17 foot tall. So this doesn't work the way it is, which means we're going to make them now work for us. So, so we're not actually making them. Oh, how Timberland does that. We're going to now make them for us. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Because I always get that question and I apologize. I've always been like, no, we don't make our columns. Look, they're packaged. They come to us already made but we have to cut them to size and we're gonna use number that I just generated on each bracket. We're gonna make a story poll and we're gonna make the columns <laughs> for us. All right. So One, you make up your columns. We're gonna make them up. Pull them off. Time to make the columns up, let's go. Negative quarter, negative quarter, negative A, zero, zero. Zero. Negative sixteenth. Sixteenth, yep. Negative sixteenth. One thing that I always like to do is make sure I find the longest ear. Uh, these aren't always perfect on the bottom. Ohio Timberland does a good job, but not much is perfect these days. Minus a quarter. Minus quarter. Minus quarter. So something that I wanted to make sure you understood was when we made all those um, marks on our brackets with the Stabila rotary laser, um, those dimensions, like most of them were around like a 16th, so the wall was really close. This one here that I'm working on, this column, this post location was negative a 16th. So the top of our truss heel, or I should say the bottom of our truss heel, top of our post, is at 17 feet. So I'm going to go 17 minus a 16th. Now when I make that mark, that that was annoying now that i have that mark there and i let's say i square this line across that is the location of our truss and i can take this uh i can take this storyboard that i made set it at heel which is where our truss is right on that mark and go make all of the marks down this column um, and that is why a story pole is so efficient, so nice, because you don't have to pull your tape measure once this is made and these posts are marked. You're just going to line them up and make all your marks down the line. I know I've, I've, I've covered that before, but it seems that people still are confused on the story pole. Once you do it, you find ways to use story poles all over the place in construction because it's the best way to repetitively be efficient with an accurate um, mark across you know, a lot of different areas in a job. Somebody calling me. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Wow, you beat me. Dang it, you just had to do more than me. Dang it, you beat me, dude. You beat me in my game. <laughs> oh, God. I love it. I knew I was winning either way with that one. You weren't making it past me. Oh, I didn't try. It sounded like a tank. It sounded like a turd.
I told you I'd talk about the foundation system and why this building has a, a full footing frost wall versus your standard um, pier system that we do a lot. And I think it boils down to your application, what you're doing. People always ask me, but Kyle, when you build on a foundation wall, why don't you just stud frame the wall? Uh, I think that a post frame is still a great option, especially in this situation where uh, half of this building, over half of it is gonna be an open room, 17 foot walls. Uh, that great room, if you stud framed it, it just doesn't have the same strength. I don't think it has the same uh, efficiency of insulation. The way the post frame is, it's gonna be super well insulated. Here, I'm gonna tweak this. Um, get, get the bottom. Yeah, go ahead. Throw a middle one in there. But you know, with this build, we wanted still the, I think the structure of a post frame is what we're good at, is what we're efficient at. And I think in this sort of an application where we're using these large walls, um, it's strong, it's gonna be energy efficient. Yeah, just go ahead and hammer my nail. You're talking, I was helping um, you. Yeah, okay. Um, You're energy efficient. Energy efficient, and the best part is, I think, with this sort of system, nothing will ever have to be replaced because there's not going to be any wood in the ground. There's no wood contact to ground, which even with a pier system, we still have a grade board that's up against the dirt or gravel. You're able to get a full frost protection uh, with the wall. We've got three inches of foam on the inside of this wall protecting any of that transfer of cold in the winter months to come through that wall and uh, you're never going to get critters burying underneath of your floor and i'm not trying to scare people away from doing a pier system i think it's great for the budget friendly high-end building it's better than putting wood in the ground all day and we will never do that again uh, but i get that question a lot i hope that kind of answers it if you have the budget let's say 40 to 50 bucks per linear foot to do a wall, I recommend it. It's going to be the long lasting solution. If you just want um, something that's going to be a 60, 80 year project, you know, or maybe even longer, 100 years, but you're going to have to do some maintenance to that grade board throughout its life, then a peer system, man, that's the next best thing and it's going to be a lot more budget friendly. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay, thanks for hanging with us, guys. We didn't get a ton done. We got our brackets all set. We got, you know, the the main building squared up, all the dimensions laid out on the concrete so that we can assure that we start square. Because if you don't start square, you can't end square. And a building like this is going to have, you know, two stories. It's going to have a two-story porch. It's going to have a full porch down the wall. We got standing seam. Um, you know, a lot of interior finishes, you got to make sure things are plumb, level, square. And so that all starts at the beginning. And even though it doesn't look behind me like a lot got done, a lot of important stuff got done. And tomorrow we'll be back. We'll get all of the lumber cut up for our walls. We'll get those walls constructed, put together, and start standing them up. And then this will start to take shape. So thanks for following along. We'll see you guys on the next one.